Okay, so like we said, we want to extract the data that's currently in our controller out into another spot, and we want to put it specifically into a service. Now, the issue is that the controller is not really the place for stuff like data. The controller really is where business logic should go, and we should kind of limit what's in the controller. We want to try to keep the controllers as thin as possible, and that just gives us more flexibility as we build out the application. Now services are great because we can reuse them. If we generalize the service enough, we can make use of it in different parts of our application. Now say we have a controller somewhere else within the app that does something maybe similar to what Crib's controller does, but not quite the same. What we could do is just write our logic right within the controller and then duplicate it over to the other controller. But if we can get all of that logic into one spot and then just make it general enough to be used in both places, then we've kept our code pretty dry and we haven't repeated ourselves. I am going to come over here and create a new file within the scripts directory and let's call this one cribsfactory.js. And we are going to create what's called a factory. There's a couple different ways to create services in Angular. We can use services directly, or we can create factories. We won't go into too much detail about how services and factories differ, but we'll use a factory in this case. And a factory is generally what you'll use when you want to create some kind of HTTP logic to communicate with a database. So once again, we are going to need a reference to our module, and we'll do that by going once again, angular.module, and we'll call mgcribs. And then this time, let's use factory. We want to create a factory. It's pretty similar to how we created a controller. We give it a name first, and in this case, it's going to be cribs factory. And similarly, we provide an anonymous function as the second argument. So now within the body of our factory, we can put our data. And what we'll do is let's just copy the array, only the array. We'll actually cut that out. And let's go back over to Cribs Factory and paste it in. I'll just do some formatting here. And so this is going to just be a local array. So we'll say var Cribs data is equal to our array of Cribs data. And so now we have it existing here, but we have to provide a way to get a hold of it elsewhere in the application. And the way we can do that is we can make a function that is responsible for fetching it. So let's declare a new function called get cribs. And this function will just return the cribs data. Now this function exists within our factory, but it's not yet accessible elsewhere. What we have to do is return something directly from this anonymous function that we passed in as the second argument to the factory. And in this case, let's just return an object that's going to have on it a key called get cribs that references the get cribs function just above. And now we can access the get cribs method on this elsewhere. So if we come back over to the cribs controller, we can now inject our factory here. And we're going to put a comma there and we're going to say we want to inject the cribs factory. Now, of course, we have to make a reference to this script over here within our index.html. So I'm just going to copy this line. And instead of saying cribs controller, let's instead say we want the cribs factory back over here within our controller. Now that we have cribs factory brought in as a dependency, we've injected it there. What we can do is we can call the get cribs method on it. So we'll say cribs factory dot get cribs. And so we'll save that. And if everything worked out, we should now be able to see that we still get everything showing up just fine in our application. And we do. So you might now be thinking, well, why did we do that? Why did we have to create a new file and put in more code? We've just got more boilerplate code now than we did before. And that is a good point. But the thing is, we now have a way to not have to repeat ourselves within our controllers. So for instance, if we had another spot in the application where we wanted to get all the real estate listings, instead of repeating that same code that we saw before, we can just instead use the cribs factory and inject it into that other controller and just call a simple one liner to get all of the listings. 
And this is a bit of a trivial example in this case, but once we get some complicated logic and maybe a lot of data fetching going on, it really becomes clear why factories and services in general are a good approach. So that's it for this lecture. In the next one, we're going to see how we can go a bit further and instead of housing our cribs data right within the factory here, we're going to put it into its own file and then make use of Angular's methods for interacting with servers. We're just going to be working locally, so we're going to be mocking it out, but we're going to see how Angular makes use of HTTP requests.